Good morning, folks. We've got multiple pieces of solar news. A strange Earth magnetic anomaly shows up again, and we'll see the excitement at both the start and end of a star's life. Let's begin at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last day on our star with the bright point active region still turning through. Sunspots are there, but calm for now. There are no flares in the filament eruption CME, like the one we saw exiting the corona yesterday, are visible on SOHO, but they are weak and not heading at our planet. The patchy coronal holes on the south have begun impacting Earth again the last day and a half. Telemetry is up off the floor, but since we haven't cracked 500 kilometers per second during this weak to moderate stream, it's no surprise that the KP index hasn't moved out of the green. Calm geomagnetism. So folks, it was about a week ago we described the winter version of an arc storm heading at the northwest North American territories, where feet of snow were set to be delivered in storm after storm after storm. And it continues. Been ongoing already, and there are feet, in some cases more than 10 feet of snow for the mountainous areas still due to drop in two separate occasions before these patterns break. Up next, we're going to Lake Bacal in Russia. Strange, mysterious ice circles, they say. It's not a new phenomenon. The ice circles at Lake Bacall are long known. It's just that there are a hundred hypotheses for their cause, and nobody can nail it down definitively. Well, we've discussed this in the past on the website, but it's worth noting now. Lake Bacall has one of the strongest positive electromagnetic anomalies of any place in the world. This arc-shaped lake was first discovered to contain strange gravitational and magnetic characteristics decades ago, and they are still learning more about the anomalous area. Folks, the North Magnetic Pole is tracking to run right over this area in its current shift, and those look like global electric circuit Birkeland tubes as they come through the ice, like we get a slice of the magnetic current as it alters the appearance of that ice. Time for double news on the sun. First, sunspots always take attention, then the filaments and coronal holes. But I've always been intrigued by the solar granules, the little specks that make the surface look more like connected skin cells up close than a flat, continuous feature. And you know, I figured when DKIST got operational, it would have a shot to see those tiny surface cells, but when the story broke of its capability, it was still two and a half years off, I figured I'd just be sharing the article for the pretty picture. But I still always held out hope that those tiny, grainy, unclear features would be better resolved. Are you ready? <laughs> oh yes. Now that's what I'm talking about. Looks like condensed matter to me, but that's another story for another day. DKIST in Hawaii, now the best solar telescope on Earth. Cannot wait till we start to get some solar flares from sunspots again, because that thing is going to let us know the effects on surface granules nearby, which will teach us not just about space weather, but the nature of our star. And speaking of which, let's discuss the big flare. 2003 level, 1989 level, 1859 Carrington class level. The former two seem to happen on the sun just about every solar cycle, often multiple times per cycle. For example, the September 2017 and July 2012 blasts of this last cycle met that threshold from the sun, but they were not directly aimed at Earth. The previous cycle saw three of those events and they were aimed at Earth, 2005, 2003, and 2001, where earthly technology can be at risk. But the bigger blasts that can mess with Earth's power on a greater scale, they don't happen as often. Those only happen about once every two cycles or so, and sometimes they miss Earth. And with every wire we connect on this planet, we become more vulnerable to those great solar superstorms that are indeed due to return. Those bigger ones average 18 to 28 years apart. It was 24 years between 1989 Canada blackout and the 2003 Halloween storms, and it's been 17 years from that one. Sunspots ramping up to maximum in the next couple of years. Let's transition out further into space with a visitor. This gorgeous fireball was seen over England last week near Cornwall. Gorgeous blue-green of the magnesium content with oxygen and nitrogen as the red tail and probably iron as the yellow transition regions. And speaking of catching slight glimpses and making major interpretations, they're seeing a baby star and one of the coolest looking outflows we've ever seen. And not just because it seems to be entirely asymmetrical north to south, but because of the high detail conical form emanating from the Taurus disk. This is the intermediate version of the Z-Pinch, the cosmic jet expands to encompass the poloidal field component of the extrastellar space there. Last but not least, they've got a number of new 3D Nova animations from Chandra. These are not soup-to-nuts explosions, but snapshots of the aftermath. 
meant for researchers to study the fine structure and physics they can't get out there to test in person. Of course, they're actually testing what a computer thinks happened, which was programmed by people who don't know what happened, and basically we're left with very, very pretty collections of animations, but which, in my opinion, still don't hold a candle to the ESO's clip we used to stand in for the solar micronova. And folks, whether that's the first time you've heard that term or you want to know even more, whether you're here for climate or cosmology or catastrophe, we've got an infomentary movie on the topic for you listed below this video. Scroll down to the description box for those links. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow right here but right now it's 4 20 a.m in the new valley of the sun eyes open no fear be safe everyone